Hi, Merrill from DiffBot here, and today I'm going to show you a technique for how you can leverage DiffBot's Knowledge Graph News Index. This is a news index about 50 times the size of Google News' index, and each article in the index has been structured so that you can filter by tags, by sentiment, and more. So why does this matter? As we crawl the web for each Knowledge Graph build, new articles are surfaced over time, and these articles have a ton of ways they can be filtered. If you know how to leverage the knowledge graph uh, with these filters, it's like you can build a search engine just for your needs. So today we're gonna look for indicators about corn futures, uh, commodity, but the same techniques could be used to stay up to date about brand news mentions, indicators related to a specific stock, regulatory announcements, or uh, negative or positive attention on some entity. So. A crucial part of this functionality is being able to schedule a query so that it runs every X amount of time and updates you about new news articles. This functionality was originally built into DiffBot's Excel add-in, and you can follow along there. But for uh, DiffBot users who don't use the add-in, we've created a mini app you can visit at the uh, link on the screen. To get started, we'll need our DiffBot tokens. These can be found by clicking on the uh, right uh, top hand corner of the screen at app.diffbot.com. Simply paste your token uh, into the query scheduler and click create and you're in. So you'll need four things for setting up scheduled news monitoring with DiffBot. First, a name for your scheduled entity. Uh, second, an actual article query. This is what specifies which articles will be returned to you. Third, how often you want this query to run, and fourth, an email to get results sent to you. So one, three, and four aspects you can answer for yourself. Uh, in my case, uh, I wanna know about corn futures uh, every day. So I'm going to name this scheduled query uh, corn, and I'm going to leave the scheduling at, uh, you know, send me new results at every one, one day. And I will add my email as well. Now, the second component mentioned is an article query, and this is where I'm going to spend a little bit more time working through this. This field will accept a uh, DiffBot query language, or DQL query. If you've never used DQL, never fear. There's a visual query builder that can generate DQL for you. Uh, if you want to jump into more advanced queries with more parameters, you will need to learn a little DQL, but I've included some other resources for learning in the description below, and I'm going to step you through examples of both visual and non-visual query building. So if you head to app.diffbot.com, you can select uh, search. This will um, pull up our knowledge graph query builder. So in our case, we want uh, article entity types. In this hypothetical example, I want to monitor news that may be related to corn futures. That is uh, financial contracts that note that a given amount of an asset can be bought for a certain price at some point in the future, with corn being the asset. So. Uh, the United States is the world's largest producer of corn, so I'm going to start by uh, specifying publisher country, United States. And this is really powerful. If you've ever tried to Google for news monitoring purposes across languages or regions, you can't really do it. So each language is basically its own index. So the knowledge graph is uh, truly a global, unsiloed news index. Uh, next, we'll want to specify that article text should contain the word corn. And I would recommend also clicking search after you add every parameter just to see what's returned. Uh, is it many articles, few articles? How do you need to alter your query? And uh, in this case, looks like over 600,000 articles are returned. And while that's cool, that's also impractical for reading them all. So let's narrow down the search a bit more. Uh, there are uh, many parameters that you can use um, related to article queries, including uh, categories that our AI has generated. And these are in the form of uh, tags label. So let's see what happens if we um, search for articles that have been tagged futures market and contain the text corn. And as you can see, we uh, got less articles returned, but for our example, we want uh, indicators, not commentary on what's already happened in corn futures markets. So uh, let's replace the last filter by specifying uh, text contains the word production. So this returns less than the original query, which was 600K plus, but a good bit more than the category futures market. 
So this is promising. You'll probably want a decent but not overwhelming throughput if you want to find value in this sort of news monitoring that at the end of the day will occur in a spreadsheet. Um, and for this use case, you likely wouldn't want last year's news uh, either. So let's uh, specify uh, date after the first day of this month. So this returns uh, 146 article entities. Uh, it's targeted and informative, but not overwhelming for, say, a solo futures trader or uh, someone who's be, who will be looking at this in spreadsheet format. So if you wanted to schedule a query like this uh, that's built entirely with the visual editor, you can simply select the tab Query, and uh, you would just copy this value here over to the, the Query Scheduler. Before we do this, I'll share a few basic ways you can enhance your query, sort of moving beyond the visual query editor. First of all, you can change your query time frame to a relative date instead of an absolute point in time. Uh, simply delete the first of December, and the syntax for this will be date less than 31D, where D is days. Obviously, you can adjust this number to whatever you see fit. Um, next, let's say we're looking for very positive or negative coverage of corn production. Sentiment scores run from negative 1, which is very negative, and positive 1, which is very positive. So typically, most articles fall between negative 0.5 and 0.5, with some outliers being more extreme. Let's say we're uh, only on the lookout for the most negative articles. So you can specify sentiment of less than negative 0.5 and click search. You'll see uh, only seven American corn production articles from the last month fit the bill. And from uh, a quick glance in table view, we can see that they are about a natural disaster, a uh, toxicological report, uh, corn blight, corn prices falling, uh, and a listeria outbreak. So we're potentially onto something for this example, where we might be looking for issues in, say, the corn supply chain. So this is all to show that uh, you can spend some time with exploratory analysis and fine-tuning your query so you don't have to sift through as many somewhat related articles in the future and so that you're getting valuable articles on a regular schedule. Um, once you're ready, just simply scroll to the top and uh, copy your query uh, into the query value for the scheduler. I'm just going to request the default output, uh, but note that you can specify whether you want uh, Excel or CSV returned in a range of fields associated with uh, an article query. Also note that you can effectively schedule queries using the Knowledge Graph API. This would be useful if you wanted to consume your article feed in some sort of dashboard or programmatically. But the allure of this method is that you can get global and very granular news monitoring coverage right in the hands of anybody who can use a spreadsheet. So if you're following along and really want to know what happens with corn next, be sure to save your query and uh, watch the future of corn prices slide right into your inbox. Until next time.